Hello guys! Welcome back to Lady Alchemist YouTube channel. Are you excited for a fun learning session? Our topic for today is all about the properties of ionic and covalent compound. And for our objective, number one is to differentiate ionic from covalent compounds. Identify the properties of ionic and covalent compounds. Recognize ionic and covalent compound based on their physical properties. And appreciate the importance of ionic and covalent compounds in everyday life. But how are we going to determine if a compound can be classified as ionic or covalent compound? And how are these compounds formed? And how do they differ from one another? These are the things we need to discuss in today's video lesson. But our topic will focus on the properties of ionic and covalent compound. So without further ado, let's get started. In our day-to-day -day activities, we always encounter different kinds of compounds. Have you ever seen salt and sugar side by side without any label? How are you going to differentiate one from the other? There is a lot of compounds and most of them look physically the same, just like salt and sugar. When sugar and salt are placed side by side, they look the same because they are both white solid crystals. And we all know that salt is salty and sugar tastes sweet. These properties suggested that they are very different substances. But how are we going to identify their properties? Specifically, how ionic compounds differ from covalent compounds? Now let's find out. There are two common types of compounds based on chemical bonding characteristics, the ionic compound and covalent compound. Compounds are chemical substances that are made up of two or more elements that are chemically combined in a fixed ratio. Ionic compounds is a chemical compound composed of ions held together by electrostatic force termed ionic bonding. It is composed of positive charged ion called cations and the negative charged ion called the anion. Now here are some of the examples of common ionic compounds and their uses. Number one is the NaCl or also known as table salt. It is used for food preservation and food preparation. Then we have COCl2 or cobalt 2 chloride which is also known as silica gel with, which absorbs water. Then we have the Ki or potassium iodide or iodine supplement in iodized salt. Then we have silver nitrate which is used as antiseptic and germicide. Moving on to NaNO3 or also known as sodium nitrite that is used as meat preservation additives. Then we have AlCl3 which is one of the ingredients in, in deodorants. Then, you have the KNO3 or potassium nitrate that is used in gunpowder, matches, and fireworks. And we have the ammonium nitrate. The ammonium nitrate is used in fertilizers in plants. Now, let's discuss the properties of ionic compounds in terms of formation. Formation in the ionic compounds has high electrostatic interaction between ions. And the interaction between the cations and anions are very strong. Ionic compounds have high melting and boiling point. Which means that ionic compounds need high temperature to melt or boil the ionic compounds. Ionic compounds are also brittle 
due to the presence of 3D lattice structure. The ions are arranged in regular geometric structure called the crystal lattice. The ions in the crystal lattice are closely packed together, creating a strong electrostatic force of attraction. When we apply force, it breaks the regular repeating patterns of oppositely charged ion, causing it to the light charges to come closer with one another. The repulsion breaks the lattice structure. In terms of solubility in water, ionic compounds are easily dissolved in water. When an ionic compound, like salt, dissolves in water to form an aqueous solution, the cations and anions are dissociated or separated and becomes free to conduct electricity. Ionic compounds are good conductors of heat and electricity. The ions are break out to form cations and anion, causing it to conduct electricity. These ions are free to move. Only ionic compounds in liquid or molten form or aqueous solution are good conductors of heat and electricity. The solid ionic compounds do not conduct electricity. Instead, they are considered the good insulator because the ions are locked into its crystal lattice and the ions cannot move out. So the solid compound cannot conduct electricity. Now let us move on to covalent compounds. Covalent compound is a molecule formed by covalent bonds in which the atom shared one or more pairs of valence electron. Covalent compounds consist of two non-metal elements. Covalent compounds tend to share their electrons to other non-metal to become stable or to attain the stability. Bands of a covalent compound are not polarized due to even sharing of electrons between the elements. Also, covalent compounds can form single, double, or triple band. Now, let's move on to some of the uses of covalent compounds. Number one is sucrose or table sugar. It is used as sweetener for cooking or for baking. Then we have ammonia. Ammonia is also a covalent compound which is used in soap, detergent, washing bar, and some other cleaning liquids. Then we have the ethyl alcohol or ethanol. Ethanol is used as disinfectant. Then we have water. Water is one of the most important substances. It is also essential for daily and domestic use. And we have carbon dioxide. It is a covalent compound which is used in soap or cold drinks and some other fluid as well. Then we have the acetic acid or vinegar that is used for cooking. Okay, moving on to the properties of covalent compound in terms of formation. Covalent bonds where atoms shared to a number of electrons. The bonds of a covalent compound are not polarized due to even sharing of electrons between the elements. It leads to smaller interaction within the molecules and the forces within are weak. Now how about the electrical conductivity of covalent compounds? Covalent compounds do not conduct electricity. They do not conduct electricity because there is no free-flowing ions but, of course, with the exemption of graphite. The solubility of covalent compounds in water, generally, covalent compounds are insoluble in water. 
Solubility in water of covalent compounds may vary. You may also apply the rule like dissolves like, which means that the polar solutes will dissolve in polar solvent like water. The non-polar solute do not dissolve in polar solvent like water. Now for the summary of the lesson in terms of formation, in the ionic compounds is through the or through high electrostatic force of attraction while covalent compound is through covalent bonds where atoms share their valence electron. In terms of hardness, ionic compounds are hard and brittle whereas covalent compound can be soft and more flexible. In terms of the melting and boiling point, ionic compounds have high melting point and boiling point. Whereas the covalent compounds has low melting and boiling point. In terms of solubility, the ionic compounds dissolve easily in water, while generally covalent compounds are insoluble in water. In terms of electrical conductivity, Ionic compounds conduct electricity or good conductor of electricity, whereas covalent compounds are poor conductors of heat and electricity. So that's it. I hope you learned something new today. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. See you on my next video. Bye!